Hey Fabulous! So welcome or welcome back to Fabulous Mirror Friday. For the last case for this week, we are going back to Florida. This case was actually said to have been pretty well known. Um, if anybody was in the Florida area or helped look for um, our missing child that I'm talking about in this case, definitely let me know. Because apparently from what I've seen, there was a pretty big search party for him, understandably. And so, and so despite this being a, being a pretty well known case, there are of course some holes, like you would normally see in every story. Um, and so with that being said, I'm going to get what is publicly known down below. If y'all knew anybody involved in the case, would be the victim, uh, the two women that are accused of killing him. Anybody, just let me know. And so with that being said, I'm coming rambling. Source now as always, and let's go and get started. So we're going to start off with Anna Maria. So Anna Maria Cordona, she was apparently born November 26, 1961 in Cuba. In her teenage years, she would unfortunately start doing drugs and prosecution, prostitution. In 1980, apparently she was one of one of the 125,000 Cubans that came over to Florida. She would get pregnant and apparently would return to prostitution and then she would wind up having a son named Juan Quinte. So then in 1982, apparently she would get arrested three times for breaking and entering. She would then meet a, apparently a popular drug dealer by the name of Fidel Figueroa. And like I said, he was a popular drug dealer in Miami. Apparently they would conceive a child together and she would give birth to that child. And apparently her name, because it's a girl, is Tahimi Cordana in 1985. Eventually, Anna will, of course, get pregnant again. And it said that she actually once got $10,000 and a gun to go settle a drug debt that Fidel had. So then she goes and meets with said man that apparently Fidel had a drug debt with. She had sex with him, then shot him in the chest. Luckily, apparently, he survived. Fidel actually was actually murdered in August of 1987. Didn't say who he was murdered by. But of course, um, apparently, Fidel was the only one that was working and and was pretty much living off Fidel. So now that he's dead, uh, of course that money is going to pretty much dwindle. But it's said that he, Fidel, I guess, like knew that he might get murdered one day because of course you're dealing with drugs. So that's a pretty dangerous game. So he left behind 100k, and hopefully that should last you and our two kids plus one, because remember one's not his kid biologically at least. And so and of course went and spent it on drugs and other things. And then her kids were basically taken away on allegations of neglect. And so I should have mentioned this, uh, Lazaro was actually born on October 17th, the same year his father was murdered. So like not even, apparently less than two months after his father's murder. So she was pregnant with Lazardo while her man was murdered. Anyway, so apparently, so then, so now that all three of the kids are born and Fidel had left behind his money, because like I said, he's dead. Anna basically goes and spends it, you know, left and right. Like, that wasn't meant for all y'all. That wasn't meant for just her. She was just spending it like there was no tomorrow. And then she would leave the kids with caretakers for, like, days. And whenever they did get in contact with her, which is, like, pretty rare. But when they did, apparently she would cuss them out for bothering her, even though these are her own kids. So then, of course, apparently Lazaro would eventually get an injury that required a hospital visit. To which a caretaker took him there. And then social services are called, which resulted in them getting taken away. And so it was actually said that one of the caretakers even got uh, custody of the kids for apparently one and a half months. And then Anna would eventually come in and get custody of them again in November 1988. So Anna would apparently start dating a woman by the name of Olivia Gonzalez, Gonzalez Mendoza. And so the five of them, because remember Anna, Olivia, and then Anna's three kids would apparently start living in motels. Olivia's over here working multiple jobs and apparently even shoplifting to um, keep it going. Because even, even back then, because you know, five people, that's expensive. Because what from it looks like Anna wasn't working. And so, for whatever reason, Anna would apparently start abusing Lazaro. And so, apparently, she would basically duct tape his diaper to keep the feces in as long as possible. So, because I guess she didn't want to change him. Because, again, he's a baby. So, obviously, he's over here wearing diapers. And then Olivia would say that apparently she would also abuse L Lazaro in order to keep Anna happy. Because like, they're together. So, I guess, like, Olivia was trying to keep her best to keep Anna happy. And then she apparently would spray him with insecticide and ingest inject him with cocaine quote-unquote, for amusement. And then Anna apparently had also stabbed Olivia in the hand. And Olivia would later say that this is the reason why I didn't go to anybody about anything about what she was doing to Lazaro because, you know, you didn't stab me, so who said you won't kill me? So so on the day of Halloween, which is October 31st, 1990, Anna would apparently hit Lazaro with a baseball bat. They then put, apparently put him in the closet. So then on November 1st, apparently Olivia would try to go to said closet to try to, like, scare him in order to keep him quiet the next day. Apparently, by this point, unfortunately, the beating was so severe that Lorazo had actually died. So then, once they realized he had died, they take him, uh, they drive his body to Miami Beach, which apparently is like 20 minutes away from where they live, and they, they proceed to dump his body in a bush. So then, of course, his body is then found, but his body is then found the next day. So then, a former caretaker of the three kids would call in on November 6th and saying, hey, I might not who, because at this point, all they knew this boy would buy was that he 
had a, a t-shirt with some lollipops on it and the media knew him as baby lollipops which is why I'm calling this case baby lollipops because of the shirt he was wearing and then a former caretaker on November 6th calls and said hey um I might know who that is and there was another woman by the name of Gloria who had nothing to do with this she then proceeds to call the police and apparently for some weird reason brags and says oh I actually committed that murder and then actually threw uh Lorazo against a wall and there's blood on my wall so of course police they're taking that allegation seriously because it's a child we're talking about here they go to her house and there's no there's ketchup on the wall. Then Anna and Olivia doesn't say where the kids are at this point. Apparently they flee to Orlando once they find out that Lorazo's body had actually been found. They didn't say it was actually is actually him yet, but they were like, well, they're gonna connect the dots soon enough. So they flee to Orlando, which is still in Florida, and they were thankfully arrested. So then Anna's over telling multiple different stories about how Lorazo died, because obviously they're gonna ask you about that. She is in charge of first degree murder and child abuse. Then the autopsy apparently shows his lips being to the point to where they pretty much were almost detached from his body. Um, he apparently was three years old at the time of his death, but weighed 18 pounds. So obviously, y'all already know that's underweight. And apparently his eyes were sunken in and his ribs were sticking out. So then apparently his right leg was actually smaller than his left leg because apparently there was a blood accumulation due to an injury that he was given. You know, obviously due to the abuse that Anna was giving him. Uh, apparently there was a point where the feces had been... in and the diaper so long that they gave him an infection and somehow the skin wound up being torn and feces was actually said to have gotten into the skin. And so it's also said that even if he had survived, apparently he wouldn't even be able to have, he wouldn't even be able to have a sense of smell. So then Olivia eventually apparently confesses that she actually did hit L L Raza with a baseball bat and that her blows may have actually been the one to kill him. So then Olivia apparently gets a plea deal, like I said, as they always do against Anna in order to only serve 40 years because obviously this is a child death they're going to try to send her as to death and rightfully so and so actually she was actually released after serving 17 years in 2008 so then on April 1st 1992 Anna was sentenced to death she appeals basically saying that prosecution left out key evidence and apparently it was successful and in 2012 apparently she is sentenced to death again and she appeals this time basically saying that prosecution was repeatedly telling the jury to basically have justice for Lorazo basically saying Sentencing his mom to death is the only way we can get justice for, for this child. So then in her third trial, apparently they found uh, people who were cellmates with Olivia. Because like I said, Olivia was released in 2008. So, so by this point, if she's not dead, she's just out living her life. And the cellmates actually say that Olivia is actually the one who killed uh, Lorazzo. So then the end of the third trial, her sentence is changed to life in prison without parole. And so then the, the uh, little final thing about this, apparently in March of 2018... Lorazzo's uh, older brother Juan Punte which was Anna's first child apparently he actually died in prison while he was serving 10 years for robbery didn't say how he died just say he died so yeah uh, that's two out of Anna's kids that now have since passed where the surviving daughter's at I don't even know but I mean a she don't want to be associated with her mom I can't blame her you know so that being said that's the case of the Florida baby lollipops murder so if you knew the case uh if you remember when they talked about it because remember they were looking they were trying to uh, identify this, this child's body for a while. And so just let me know what you remember the, about the case, if you remember anything at all, or if you know anybody who was like helping searching for, you know, help and search. And so um, with that being said, I cover Faith Females three times a week. Subscribe for more Faith Females, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. So with the play dead, will you regret everything that you did, that you said? I don't think you understand what you're doing. And my heart's black and blue from the bruising I feel like when I'm with you I'm losing I feel like you think that this amusing Sitting there gaslighting and confusing Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry the conclusion Even though I offer all of the solutions I wish you loved me like I love you, it's stupid When I'm alone with you I never feel lucid I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid I wish when I first saw you I knew this When I'm with you I feel so useless I feel diluted, my heart's been wounded